friends. Welcome to another episode of the IT Business Podcast. I am your host, Uncle Marv. You are here listening to the live show, Wednesday evenings, 8 p.m., presented by NetAlly, your number one ally when it comes to network testing diagnostic tools. They are lovely friends of the podcast. If you are watching the video, you saw some of the other sponsors up there. Tonight, we are going to have our newest sponsor, the uh, mug that you can see if you're watching the video, holds my nightly drink, sponsored by Super Ops. And uh, Juan and Nancy are waiting in the green room, and we will be talking about them. And then, of course, our other sponsors, Computers Done Right and InstantHouseCall.com. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get on with the show. Let me bring in the man himself, Mr. Juan Fernandez. Jacket is present. And go. Nancy Enriquez. Hey. <laughs> the girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> Although there probably is no dragon anywhere, is there? <laughs> there is not. <laughs> no dragon. You know no what's dragon. funny is that I actually have the dragon tattoo. Oh, see, a man so with go. dragon tattoo. <laughs> we do need to have some tattoo disclosures. Uh. <laughs> I, on the other, would be tattoo talk. So yes, <laughs> although I don't have a tattoo, so. I don't have much to offer. I was like, all conversation. All All right. (laughs) Listen, this is this is about as crazy as I ever got in life. I had an earring in the left ear until I was forty, and I said, "That's enough." (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know. I still have that same ear piercing, Uh, All right, so here we are. Uh, our newest sponsor, Super Ops. So we're going to chat and discuss all things Super Ops, the all new, future ready, all in one PSA RMM, RMM tool to help you grow your business, supercharge it, one conversation at a time. <laughs> did I did I hit all the points? You got it, man. <laughs> You're hired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one is the channel chief, uh, which is the I short am. version of your title. What's the long version of the title? Oh, man. I think, uh, you know, the long version is, uh, what did they say? Chief cook we, and bottle washer, if you will. Oh, my, do we have time for all that? Let me start out. Like, I'll start adding all of the, my titles to just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going. You know what my favorite title has been what? in my whole life? I'll tell you this, Mark. Is CEO. And it wasn't for the reason that most people think it was because I changed it. I changed it to chief encouragement officer. Yeah. Like that's been my like thing is to encourage others to be successful. Like even no matter where I've been, like no matter at the top or at the bottom. And so, yeah, as far as title goes, I've always been like this representation of my background is like even been about just getting people in a room and, and fixing problems and working on building businesses. Like that's what this is, is like actually for my old team back when I was building my MSP, they called me the king of the conference room because I didn't have an office. I sat in the conference room and we got shit done. And so it's, it's not about titles to me, but it's, it's always been about working to help others and try to make things better. So all right, and this is why I have such amazing teammates like Nancy. Well, and speaking of Nancy, uh, your title is queen of the Americas, right? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> um, Either way. My crown is over here. I just placed it because, you know, it gets heavy sometimes. Well, you got those headphones <laughs> on, you know, don't even mess things up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right here. So super ops. You know what? Let's do this. Let's get right to the questions and let's get the hard crap out of the way. Because Ooh, that's sure. what like people are like here. They're going to be like, "Oh, are you are you going to are you going to throw some softballs at them?" Well, of course I will. You're a sponsor here, uh, so I'm going to do that. But let's first start off with the fact both of you guys are less than a year into this, right? Yeah. Uh, so Juan, my first question to you is going to be, "Why you, and why now?" So I, you know, I'll be honest about this, right? You know, one of the things that I saw a few years ago, again, being an MSP for as long as I was and building mine, 
I recognize the challenges and coming out and teaching and helping and giving my models away and helping others understand like how I grew and scale mine. I kept seeing this, this trend. And I was like, man, there's just gotta be a different, there's gotta be something better for us. Like something that fits us more elegantly. You know, I love the construction glove. It fits, it helps me build the thing, but man, I really want to be a surgeon and I'd like a surgical glove that fits me really well. And so I actually was going to go and build an ITSM platform. And I knew that there was a need in the, in the ecosystem after talking to so many wonderful MSPs and speaking at conferences and just sitting down and listening to the problems. I'm like, you know what the problem is, is that there's no process in any of these tools. Like it doesn't help me build the process to grow and scale my business. And so as I started to look at things and invested in a number of SaaS companies and started looking at other things, like I always still wanted to do it. I did the work to try to put together one and I just figured it was going to take me too long to bail. So when I stumbled across super ops, what the, one of the beautiful things about it was, is I asked a lot of questions because I'm a real hard ass when it comes to vendor due diligence. Like I'm a really tough person to do business with as an MSP. And you really, it was hard to do business with me. So a lot of the vendors that tried to do business with me couldn't get there because like, I just had a really high level of, operational excellence I required. And so I dug hard into super ops to see if I wanted to, you know, take a look at it. And man, I just saw that. And I kept asking questions like, are you going to do this? Like, I can see that you're building this in the platform. Are you actually going to do that? And I was really uncovering a lot of their future roadmap. And so I was like, this is the tool that I think is going to be the thing that actually changes the managed services industry. And I said, I believe it so much that I'm actually willing to put my name on it, which is not something I normally would do. I said, normally I'd be a far, I'd put money into something and stand outside and like kind of let it take its place. But this one I felt really strongly about and I could tell what it was doing and I could see the synergetic aspects of the way it worked inside of the managed services era, thinking about the future and like how MSPs work and the workflows and all the things that we need to manage. I just, it was too smooth for me. And I was like, I had, asked a couple of MSPs, can you do me a favor and just take a look at this? Anytime I was going to invest in something, I'd ask a group of, of very opinionated friends to take a look at stuff. And of the five that I asked, four of them came back and said, thanks for the tip. I'm signing up. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa you've never done that. Of any of the things I've ever invested in, why? And they're like, dude, it's too good. And I said, all right. So then I got it. And that's when I decided that I was actually going to come work for Super Ops. And I actually didn't say that. I knew I was going back in and I actually was going to put a badge back on being my own boss for so long. I said to myself, is this really what I want to do? And the reason that I chose to do it was because I knew it was going to change the industry. I knew it was the right thing. It was the right time. I knew that there's a lot of people that had the need, like they need tools that work for them, not the other way around. And so I said, look, if I can help build this tool to be the thing that moves businesses forward through and has the process to help build success, then I'm all in. As long as you guys are willing to listen to me, I'll come and take it to the U.S. Nice. And, that's it. and I knew that I could build an amazing team of fantastic folks because they'd see the same vision that I saw because it's not BS. It's real. So that's why I did it. And that's why I'm doing it. And that's, that's what I'm super pumped about. Like every day I get up and I'm like, today's the day that I get to announce something freaking awesome. One time after the next. Like, it's just so cool, man. So. This is why I'm here. All right. And Nancy, you were very recently on this side of the aisle in MSP. Uh, <laughs> now, I know that you got all, you know, big and stuff and you sold and you did some big things. <laughs> why are you now at Super Ops? <laughs> um, I did not get big, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I'm still the same size. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, <well. laughs> um, <laughs> you can move the camera closer and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, um, no, so uh, funny enough, I'm dropping stuff over here. Um, my journey to Super Ops starts um, actually a few years ago. Um so one thing that I have actually said recently is that this has felt kismet for me. Um, so uh, let's see, where do I begin? At the one beginning. thing that um, at the beginning, right? So um, a few years ago, uh, we 
there was a few gentlemen and I on a stage <laughs> at a conference and <laughs> we were discussing the future of MSPs. Um, and so one of the things that I said during that time was that what we're looking for in the future, uh, and this was what, 2019, so several years ago now, um, uh, that we're looking for vendors to start to participate in the MSP community. We're looking for the, not in a monetary, monetary sense, but like education, investments into the MSP world that are beyond, uh, you know, sell my product. Why? Because we make you a lot of money, right? So at the end of the day, that's for me, it was a aha moment of the future is going to be vendors working for the MSPs. Why? Because that way we all make more money together. It's an ecosystem. So a few years later, we start talking about an ecosystem. And uh, so for me, when I uh, heard about a RMM platform that was supposed to be the future, um, a couple years ago, I decided to take a peek and I liked what I was seeing. Um, I was a part of the advisory board from the very beginning, early stages. Um, it, um, I left after uh, not too long, but uh, then after that, I was on their podcast. Um, and so as an, as an MSP, sharing my MSP story. And so... Around the same time, funny enough, uh, Juan and I had talked about working together at some point in time. And so um, this is why it's kismet. I was looking for my next opportunity and Juan approached me with an opportunity um, to work with the community. And um, for me, it was like I hadn't even thought about that as a next step, but I used to say when I retire, I want to be able to go back and help MSPs, mentor MSPs. I want to give back to the community that raised me. And so because I've been in in this community since uh, out of high school. So I, for me, it was like I want to do that in return. I want to give back. And so um, when I retire, right, and Juan gave me this opportunity of hey, you could come and do that and I pay you. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. OK. Um, and so I um, obviously had looked at the product. I I wish that I had uh, recorded my reaction when I first saw it because um, I fell in love the moment I saw it. And so it was like, OK, when he said super ops, I was like, done deal. <laughs> very nice. Very Kismet. nice. Uh, you guys are getting some nice reactions from the chat there. Uh, nothing that I'm going to pin up right yet, but we may come back to a couple of those. So I, I said I was going to start with a couple of hard questions. I hope that that was not too harsh. But I do want to ask, I don't, it's not the elephant in the room, but it's something that kind of always sits in the background, at least it did, that there was this persona of super ops, before your time, uh, sure. years ago, and I'll be honest, I know very little bit about it. I heard about it. People bring it up and talked about super ops and their marketing practices, and I hope that they're better sure. um, and all of that stuff. Have you guys had to deal with that, or has the shift truly been made that it's in the past and I should have not asked the question? You know, one of the things I knew coming into this, like I was, I was here and watched during the whole ordeal. Like I was thinking to myself, that company's got some of the biggest balls in the industry to go and do that. And I watched that whole thing play out and I thought, man, that's a hell of a statement. And, you know, the challenge was, is that just like anything, me and that, you know, we mentioned early on that not everybody loves every kind of marketing, right? And especially competitors. And so there's poison pills that can be taken and distributed. And then of course, then there's connotations and a number of different things come about. So as far as marketing goes, the whole attempt 
and the whole um, persona of super ops is to be bold, to be different and to be brave. Right. And for that perspective, the marketing spoke in that way. It was an idea that was born by a, a number of MSPs that said, Hey, you guys might want to consider doing this. And then it kind of got adopted and then acted upon. Uh, but being bold, brave and brazen in terms of going to market has not changed. Super ops will still be those things. It's just the way we're doing it now in terms of the way we're marketing isn't as loud as that, right? We know that the one thing that we were after the first part was to support the community. We were listening to the community's voice, took the community's voice and amplified it times 10. And not everyone in the community felt the same. But that hasn't changed our mindset on how we're actually still embracing community, similar to the show we're doing now, right? We're still out to help MSPs. We're still doing all the things that we were doing before. We're focusing on mental health and, you know, women in tech and MS show lighting and spotlighting MSPs. Like all of the things are still relatively the same. It's just we may not do another flash mob. <laughs> so trust me, I knew what I was getting into when I came here and I remember having to go and I said, look, I, there's one thing I got to go and have a conversation with, with all the Reddit MSP mods of the boards and be like, Hey, look, get it. Saw it. It's in the past. We're taking care of it. Won't happen again in terms of, you know, doing things like that, that were seen as, uh, maybe different in, in this, in this, in the U S yeah. so by all means, uh, this is the beauty of why we're here. And as he's the head of the U S community running it very well. And I am here to make sure that we do all the right things to support our partners and all of our wonderful folks in the MSB world, the way that they feel like they should be. So any feedback would love to hear it. I, I, I'm on all the boards. I may not talk on all of them, but if anyone wants to have a conversation about things that we can improve, we're all about learning. Right. And so we all make mistakes. And, and in that cases where we've done things in the past, we course correct. And so we're changing, but all the same token, we're growing really fast. So I'm excited about it. Yeah. So to your point, we're still the same. It's just, we're still community focused. We just probably won't 10 X amplify and, and do something like that again. <laughs> well, let me say this, your reputations uh, are, are high enough in this industry that uh, people are going to take notice. Um, yes, you guys might be, you know, unicorns or, you know, you're not going to tow the company line exactly, but you're, you're honest, you're fair. Uh, you speak sure. the truth, you speak your truth. And both of you have made names for yourself being successful in this industry. And not one, I did not know you, you know, previously, but, you know, my friend Taco in the chat here, when I uh -oh. heard that you two were friends, I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> must be good people. And Nancy, we met a few years ago and, you know, um, yes, we are friends, by the way, in case you're still wondering. <laughs> so <laughs> it has been, and been good hey. here. <laughs> it takes a lot to be a good person, right? Like it's, it's, it's a lot of effort. I, you know, even when our new SDRs were joining us and I said, look, Here's the thing that will follow you for the rest of your life is your brand, just like my jacket, right? Like you, apparently you guys think my jacket has to be here all the time too. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> that's the thing, right? Like you have to focus on like being the right person. Like, and that's, you can't, you have to be who you are. And I was like, look, I don't have any expectations about who I want you to be. I want you to be who you are, but I want you to stay in your lane. Right. And then stay clean your reputation will always be the thing that you have the most so i appreciate you pointing that out because it's it takes a lot especially the channel man like sometimes it's hard yeah, yeah sometimes it's hard and the biggest thing that i i say is who you are in public and who you are in private if they're mm -hmm. not the same people are going to find out at some point you 100 percent. that is a true statement exactly. i've had that conversation so many times that it's that nausea that yeah. So, yeah, I used to always, you know, be told, well, I would tell people, you know, ask me a question and I will answer it the same to your face as I would behind your back. And, you know, if it's a bad thing, it's like, you may not want to ask the question, <laughs> but, but, uh, you're probably going to get the real answer, right? Yeah. Uh, I know I'm the bearer of bad news often. 
All right. So let's um, – before we get too far along, I want to make sure that, you know, I, you know, acknowledge once again – that yes, you guys are sponsors of the show. Now I'm not a user of the product and I don't know if that's a yet in parentheses or anything because I, uh, I don't, I don't vet vendors all the time. Uh, there's a ton of vendors in the channel. I, i I have what I have in my stack. I like it every so often. I'll pick one and I'll look at it, but uh, when you reached out to me uh, for sponsoring the show, I'm like, hmm, well, I think we can make that work. And I know that you've been wondering, you know, when there was going to be some some stuff coming. And today I'm unveiling your oh. mugs here printed today just so that you know. No, dude. I've got the second one here. <laughs> so each of you. We'll get yeah. your own mug. I'm unveiling Yay. the printing here. So there they are. I literally said, I wish I had a mug with with the logo on it. And there, there you go. There it. they are. <laughs> so each That's of awesome. you each of you will have your mug soon. We'll just talk after the show about where to get them sent. So uh, there you go. Yay. Oh, that's fantastic. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Matthew, do you have a beer? No, I do not have a beer. It's Pellegrino. What is that? <laughs> oh, that's a Miller Lite. <laughs> it, yeah, I don't drink beer. Um, so it definitely wouldn't be Miller Lite or beer at all. <laughs> you know what, though? I, there's a comment in there. I don't know. Not a beer uh, might, that, that cup looks like it might hold some uh, other adult beverages, too, for those that are asking in the chat. I mean, so let me know, at least this explain. One in particular, does not. But these are these are not your typical. They're not the ceramic mugs. So it's yes, you can put both hot and cold liquids in them, but don't put it on a hot plate because this will okay. this will come off. So this is your basic mug. Um, I use it for my. So this is my. <laughs> what what's Adult in there? Beverage? What? After What's hours libation. No, this is my uh, concoction that I make. Sometimes it's a combination of orange juice and water, coconut juice and water, uh, pineapple juice and water to keep my to keep my voice silky smooth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. And then uh, now, do you put a little something in? Sometimes that I'll have a hot tea, but <laughs> I had that earlier. Um, my angry hot tea for those that remember the pod nuts pros days. Uh, that's there. That's awesome. So <laughs> now that I've, I've got that, that's my sponsor portion for the evening. So you guys have your mugs. Um, they will Thank be in so route soon. That. That's so cool, man. Thank you. Now let's ask, let's answer the question here for those that may not know, cause there, there may be some people that have popped in here just to see you guys. There may be some people listening, uh, who are regular listeners, but don't know what or who super ops is. So let's at least do that. I I know I mentioned it as the all in one PSA RMM tool, but what exactly does that mean? Yeah. Well, you know, if you think about super ops and you think about the operational aspects of your business, you know, for those MSPs that may be just starting out, which I don't know if there's any of them here today, but you're thinking about, there has to be some tools. There has to be some things that I need to operate my business or support my customers. And there's a number of options, right? Sometimes you stumble across a PSA that's like a ticketing platform, and then you might find some tools that you can remotely control and get some alerting and, and connectivity to those devices. And super ops is all of those things. So instead of having to go to a multiple, a multitude of places for it, you can come to a one-stop shop in terms of a fully integrated AI driven RMM PSA tool. And a lot of the things that MSP start off as is without process. So we start doing tech, we start doing break fix, we start working on machines, but like we don't have like ticketing processes and SLAs and all these other things. We just start servicing things. Well, super ops has gone above and beyond to try to build the processes that you need to operate your business effective and efficiently into the tool so that you don't have to go out and recreate all these things and go out and learn how do I run these tools better? It's already done for you. 
So a lot of the things that you would spend, and I know because I did it multiple years mm -hmm. trying to figure out, is done for you. And that's <laughs> really the beauty. That. <laughs> Why? I'm like, <laughs> I know because I did oh. it, and I'm I'm like, oh my god, the, those days. <laughs> I was there. I remember using free uh, PSA RMM tools back when I had my first one, like, and thinking, okay, well, I just need to get to revenue. And then I'll be able to buy something nicer, right? And ultimately, I yep. did. But I spent a lot of money building that first one. And then the second one was even more expensive. I spent millions on that, right? So this is just a much different, more fully integrated tool that has automated workflows and collaborative commu uh, communication and has centralized you know, customer communications and security and compliance and a, you know, a really seamless a unified dashboard to where when you're working on stuff, I've even heard people say, and I've, I'm injecting a reality from customers where I think the button should be is right where I want it. Like I close my eyes and say, it should be right here and it's there. And that's the, the amount of effort that super ops has gone through to listen to customers and partners and actually go through and change and configure and build this platform to really fit. Like I talked about earlier, like a surgical glove. So that's what super ops is. And we have so many amazing things inside of it that, yeah. Excel do you, do you have Excel things. sheets in it? <laughs> you can export to Excel. Excel everything. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, I'm sure that at some point we can give you that view. <laughs> so I think, about. you know, a lot of us. Aren't you tired of seeing that though? <laughs> yeah. But a, a lot of us started <laughs> out. With, you know, looking for tools and of course, you know, the first thing you sure. get from most of us is that remote access, you know, we just yeah. want to be able to remote yeah. in. And so we get that. And, you know, back in the day now, I didn't start until 2014. Sure. And that's not too late in the, you know, MSP game, but it's not too early either. But a lot of the tools around that time were not integrated. Your sure. RMM your PSA were yep. separate. If you wanted documentation, separate. If you want antivirus, separate. separate. If you, I mean, it was everything was separate. Now I did fall into one that had a big chunk of that, sure. which is one of the reasons I don't want to change is because when I have evaluated tools since I sure. seem to lose a piece of what I had and going out away from one dashboard is something I don't want to do. Now, you guys have a lot of features that uh, – were they all truly built from the ground up when it comes to PSA, RMM, documentation, project management, uh, billing? Was all that truly built from the ground up? Yeah, it is. The beauty of what's built is it's built on a modern framework and a modern platform in a secure environment under secure pretenses. Like it was literally started from nothing. There's nothing that was bought. There's nothing that's borrowed. There's no GitHub in there. There's no products that have been bought. Like even our integrations, the reason people love them is because we build them into our tool, not bolt them on. Like, so we take APIs and others and literally build them in to our tool. So the reason for that is that the seamless experience has to be just that because every time that like there's a loss in technician time. Right. So if we were to take these things and just slap them together, there's still this gap. Like there's frustration time of switching between things. If I can click, 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 get it done. I'm happy. Right. But if I'm click, oh, let me go get that. And then, all right, click. Oh, the phone's ringing. What was I doing? Right. Like there's just too many opportunities there. So yes, to your answer, super ops is built from the ground up on its own code, uh, in its own environment by its own devs. We have about, we have about, I think we have about 40 engineers that are on staff and that's all they do is they just build code and write code and do feature requests. And so if there's issues or roadmap is public, like all those things, as people say, there's issues like that's why it's done so fast with us because we have devs that are doing it we're not like having to go and hire the third party that helped us build it right so that that that's a speed that's time to profitability and time to revenue for us so proudly it is built by us and has been from the ground up 
All right. So Nancy, you're out and about, you know, talking to MSPs and stuff. What, what are you hearing in terms of questions that they're asking? Um, can it do this? Can it do that? Or I wish you guys did this. What, what's the feedback you've been getting? So, um, I'm, I'm glad that you asked this question because it's an easy one for me. Thank God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I had a hard one coming. (laughs) Fine, fine. (laughs) Um, No, so um, that's one of the things that excites me the most. So um, I started to literally go live with partners, uh, not even partners, with people that are demoing the the product because of the excitement that I saw when they were seeing the product, which was very similar to my own reaction. So – I was literally timing uh, how quickly I could onboard myself um, onto the product. And it was less than two minutes, um, which was like mind blowing. Um, And then um, just the process of getting everything set up, it was, it flowed just naturally. It was like, this is what I so heartstakingly built into other platforms for so many years. And holy crap, this made the, I, I told Juan, okay, let me go start an MSP. <laughs> told it, her no. <laughs> I, mean, I told her no. I can, I, oh. <laughs> uh, so it, it definitely excited me uh, just because of the time savings that not just like setting up, but the time to like the timing on tickets, uh, how you start a timer even is some of the things that um, I haven't, I saw, but were some of the things that were people were in awe of is the timer itself. Um, Cause it's not difficult to start. So if it's not difficult to start adoption is much easier uh, and it tracks and it pauses and it, it follows your movements through the platform. So it's, that's one thing. Um, God, there's been so many, I think I have a list here um, actually of things that people have said. Um, The support team is um, incredible. (laughs) So uh, kudos to the support team because apparently they are amazing. Um, And that's one thing that I hear over and over again. Um, Feature requests are quick, um, so the development team is quick to add features that are being requested um, and that they're on top of fixes. So that's that's something that I got, that I wrote down today uh, from feedback just today. Um, and I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sticky notes. Okay, we don't have time um, for all ten. Okay, so you and Tom are friends, so Tom's going to love you. Tom's like where the he he, run, he loves the sticky notes, man. Let's give a shout out to Tom out there. <laughs> Mister Mister Wyant is in the is in the chat. I actually wish I had and he, he asked a great head. question that you answered. How oh. many how many clicks was that when you were doing your clickety click? So I think it's four million clicks. <laughs> click, 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 click 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 click. Yeah, all the post its. <laughs> now, have you guys had any any comments about? And I and I need to ask this. Because the company was born in India, and there's a perception that the the data centers are over there. Are there data centers like here in the U.S., or is everything still over in India? No, it's actually all here. So our our head, where our company is founded, actually, even though we have uh, a team in India, like we actually our data centers are actually here in the AWS here in the U.S. So but you, you just had a big party there. over there last week, man. Isn't weren't we you did, there for man, two weeks? None of our data was in India with us, bro. <laughs> okay. like, it was like we left it here in the US <laughs> because we'll see you in a little while, data, and we'll be back. Like <laughs> we'll be back. So it actually it's here in the AWS East and West. So like we have it here. It's it does not actually exist anywhere in you in the in uh, India. It is accessed securely from the other side. Again, we have our SOC 2 Type 2, and so we have a lot of security controls and protocols around how we handle data and are able to address a lot of those. And again, it's on our website, too, if anyone wants to dig into it. But 
it was a big concern, right? Like, uh, you know, it is a friendly nation, but at the same token, a lot of people have some concerns about that. And so for all intents and purposes, there's a good question. Uh, but we are here. And again, this is why we're actually housing our corporate headquarters. My One of my big roles here is actually standing up the U.S. headquarters here in Dallas and then also in Tampa. So we are here and the corporate headquarters is now here, uh, here in Texas. So what's going to be in Tampa? Because, you you know, that's my state. I know we're coming to your town, man. Like I'll be down there uh, next month. Well, Tampa's uh, not my town. You're going to be you're going to be in my town. You're going to be in the East Coast. I might come by. We'll go go to lunch. Come on by. I will. (laughs) Come see the studio. (laughs) I'm going to come over there and see it because we'll be there for a couple of weeks. So, yeah, we're going to open up our office in Tampa. So a lot okay. of our sales engineering, our sales team uh, primarily will be here. So a lot of our India team actually will be here on rotation working in the U.S. At, with us. So they'll be rotating through and then they'll be going back over a period of months. So like our Texas office will be the hub. And then we'll actually have a lot of our SE team, our sales engineers out of Tampa. So. Okay, you so pretty, uh, so the super ops yacht that was in Miami that's going to be that's going to be stationed in Tampa <laughs> is what you're saying. Yeah, man, we got to get you on that next one permanently. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, a lot of people love the yacht. I promise we will do that again. All right, um, let's. Uh, I, people can go to the website. I had put it up earlier. Superops.com. And all the questions are there, the frequently asked questions, uh, sign-ups, can you pay, you know, what types of plans you have, monthly, annual, uh, how many endpoints you have per technician because your pricing is per technician. Here's a question. The first package only comes with 150 endpoints, and then you have to buy more. How did you guys come up with the number of 150? So if you take, it's actually, so the pricing, the way SuperOps prices is per technician. And so if you think about the total number of devices that a technician can fully support, right? We hear numbers between, you know, again, I don't, no PTSD moments here, but like that upper echelon of 400 devices per technician, right? Like everyone's like always thought about that number, even though it came out in the early enterprise days. We kind of started to take a look at the pricing and said, all right, hey, how many devices can a technician actually even effectively manage? And what should like that workload look like and so on and so forth? So the number 150 came about in terms of the number of devices that are associated with that. So as you think about scaling your business, instead of having to buy individual licenses for every little thing, we said, okay, well, if there's five technicians, you know, there's likely going to be X amount of seats that are associated with that particular company. And that's how we came up with the pricing. So if you're in the operational range of efficiency, you're probably going to be somewhere in that 150. And then if you start really going into the scaling component and you're actually doing more with less because you have operational prowess, then you don't have to pay for another technician. You just pay for the additional seats. So that's really how it came about in terms of how they structured it. A lot of a lot of goes into our pricing conversations. Like you can't imagine the amount of conversations we have around how to price stuff. But that's the that's how the genesis of that design came about. Again, predating us, but it took me a minute to make sure I understood as well. Yeah. All right, and then of course the big question is uh, the AI powered part of it. So exactly what is this intelligent automation part of uh, super ops. Yeah. So just in full transparency too, because I know a lot of people are worried about, again, the data being here in the U S is a question that's answered, but the data also from a security perspective, what has access to my data? This is customer data that we have to think about, right? And these are customer computers and can this be weaponized and a lot of those things like me and Matt Lee have talked about, like, you know, the implications and the opportunities around that. So our AI was built by us. So like it is not we're not borrowing or leasing AI from another company like we're not taking chat GPT and stitching it into our programs and products like we built our own AI. And what it's built to do is to harness the data and actually use the data that it's being trained by to make better decisions. So in the case of uh, something that's really interesting is uh, 
conversations, right? So like in the case of a ticket, you could ask it, hey, summate this ticket to me. Like, just tell me everything that's happened here. And it would actually just show you everything that's happened in that ticket, give you an outcome and say, all right, hey, let's just go ahead and generate the summation of this ticket and then email it to my customer. But I also want to change the sentiment of this ticket because usually technicians are just like very raw and brash, like, hey, your PC sucks. And, you know, because you don't want to pay the money. That's why it doesn't work. That's been sent, I know, because I've seen it go out of my offices before, <laughs> right? So it's kind of like, okay, soft skills are not our strong suit. Uh, not saying that's not everybody, but there are a few. <laughs> we're techs, like we're engineers, you know? So that being said, the ours allows you to change the sentiment and saying, hey, use a softer tone on this. And it rewrites the summation of the ticket to help them come up with those opportunities and then deliver it. That's a good, for instance, of how some of it works. On the other end, a lot of the intelligent automation and the RMM aspects is looking at nuances of how the devices are functioning and making recommendations on things that might go bad, uh, things that are going to happen to those particular machines and, and ways that, you know, hey, you may not be looking at this because it has all the data and it can help you make smarter decisions on things that should take place or things that might happen in the future. So one thing a lot of that, that we spent a lot of time on mm -hmm. um, in, in my MSP was looking for patterns um, ultimately of, of, you know, what tickets are going to come in with the same issues and around the same time. And can we automate that? Uh, so that's something that we started to do within our MSP. And so to realize that this AI aspect is going to do that work for you. The, scrubbing of tickets ultimately to see what are the patterns when are they happening so that you can start mm -hmm. to build out automated uh, assistance for your customers that's something that um, it can be automatically generated for you instead of somebody actually spending the time to go through all those tickets because who has time for that <laughs> Nancy, I'm glad you spoke I, up because I was going to ask you to translate what Juan said for the simple minds. Oh, come here. on. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all jokers over here. Come on. We all live in this world. We know what we're talking we about. We do, yes. It, it, that's the thing, right? So, like, the way our AI is built in, it's a foundational component. So, it has access to the data. We'll be launching new features and things. Like, we have a network monitoring tool that we just launched. And a lot of it is like, if you knew where you were having problems on the network and with the machine, like you could triangulate that data really quickly manually. How much time does that take you though? You can't bill for that in managed services. So like your tools should do that for you. And so that's really where we're coming up with that. And again, you know, like SOP generators and other things that we're actually coming out with documentation, best practice, you know, opportunities. So all those things can be done by AI. And so that's how we're leveraging it. I mean, it's really interesting, and I think a lot of our customers are excited about some of the things they can do with it already. Now, I've heard you mention network monitoring now for probably about a month, but I haven't seen or heard exactly what the network monitoring does. So for those of sure. us who are on the outside looking in, what what are you actually monitoring? Right. So <laughs> right now, it's actually locating devices on the network, right? So... It's being able to look at all the SNMP devices that it can identify. Uh, right now, it's looking to, you know, you know, heartbeat signals and looking for the devices on the network and looking at all those things. Now, right now, I know the big ask is how soon can I actually manage and configure those devices, backup configs, do all those things. That's coming. But the first things first is as we build stuff, we have to roll it out in a way that is secure by design. So... You know, you want to make sure that we're, we built it the right way. And so we've released network monitoring to a point where you actually can now see all the devices on the network through SNMP. So future state coming with a lot of new updates and things that are being added on, which should be coming out, right. I think, Friday. I think we're announcing more of it Friday, but it's a big thing. And we're really excited about it. Just ahead of the curve. We could have had the big announcement here tonight. <laughs> All right. You're so, on the front edge, man. Yeah. So Keith asked a question in the chat that I think is going to take too long to answer, but I just wanted to uh, draw your attention to it. Um, one of his concerns is using AI 
moving away from our real value and profit, which is customer service and care, do you balance that in your delivery? Can you can you answer that quickly? So here's the thing, right? It's an option. You have an option. Like it's not taking over and doing it for you. It's just giving you a different way to position the information that and it's giving you intelligence around all the things. So instead of scrolling through Mary that had 72 tickets over the last 30 days, you can say to it, can you tell me all the tickets that Mary's had over the last 30 days and give me a summation of all her biggest problems, right? And in that, it'll actually give you the you know the compartmentalized aspect of here are all the things. And can you help me craft an email to help her explain the challenges? And then you can change the sentiment. So it's not, you don't have to use it that way, but for all intents and purposes, it's designed to create a more enhanced customer experience, not to detract, but it's also using it as a learning tool to help others understand the way to communicate more effectively with your customers, not necessarily detracting from taking the human aspect away. Because if you've ever gotten an email from me, you probably got a bunch of typos. You know it's real, right? You know that the word they, their, they has been misspelled with me a million times, right? You know it's sincere. So it's not to take the human element out. It's actually more of a learning, educational, communication aspect. And then, of course, on the automated side of the RMM, you know, it's taking all the data and and really being able to give you that strategic intelligence. So if anything is more enhancing of those aspects, and we're really cautious about approaching it in that lens because... I totally get where you're coming from, again, as a creator. I don't want AI to be creating something for me and to take away my creative ability. But I would enjoy for it to not make me sound foolish and maybe have typos (laughs) all the time. And people are like, dude, seriously? And you write books? Like, how? Well, I have an editor. (laughs) So there's that. Well, the other problem with AI, too, is that uh, right now – Anything we type into chat GPT or any of the others, sure. they technically own once we type it in there. So it becomes, you know, basic, I don't want to say public domain, but it's their domain. And the yeah. answers that we get f- from it are, I mean, for the, for lack of a better fl- phrase, become plagiarism because everybody starts using the same thing. Um, all that stuff. So it'll be interesting, but I'm glad you guys have you your own. I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm glad you guys have your own platform uh, because that's what people are going to want. They don't want to get the same old regurgitated stuff on on the other sites. The you cool use the thing same about word. it is that <laughs> same word I've as heard what? That word twice today. <laughs> regurgitate. Oh. Regurgitate. I say this all the time. I actually said this to somebody recently. Uh, I said, "Dude, there's a difference between thought regurgitation and thought leadership." And AI right now in its current state does not have the ability to be creative. It only can be iteratively regurgitated in a new way that you've never seen before, which makes you feel like it's creative, which is not. It's actually just iterating the past to you in a much different, much more balanced nuance, right? So real creativity comes from us. And this is like I talked about the future of AI and the human element back in 2008 when I did a talk for CompTIA. I created a whole presentation about what AI was going to be doing for us. So I still stick to those laurels that AI still is not ability, has the ability to create. It's just retaking everything and reorganizing it in a different way that we haven't seen. So because it has all that information. I I think when it comes to the AI um, aspect, you know, and, and it being an enhancement at the end of the day, that's what a tool is meant to do, right? Is to give you more time back so that you can spend time on the things that matter the most which is the things that we can't replace, which is humans. So, well, here's the thing too, though. Like if I was going to like have a challenge with a customer in the next 36 months and I didn't know that based on industry trends, like what if you told me that I was going to have a problem with this industry type in 36 months? Like, would I change my business model? Would I maybe pivot and stop from potentially having a mortgage in my house? You know what I mean? Because of this major deficit of this particular industry type, that's where I think the, it can actually benefit us in a multitude of ways to make really smart, futuristic decisions on business best practice, right? So this is the way we're kind of thinking about leveraging AI, not necessarily to replace your technician or do all the things that you can do, 
but actually give you valuable insights on how to operate your business. And I promise you, mark my words, and on this show, in the next 12 months, you will see us do some really, really special stuff with AI that will change the landscape for a while <laughs> until somebody copies it. <laughs> all right. And we will have so, you back on the show to explain all that and talk about it and yeah, promote man. it. And it's uh, gonna be cool. it'll be fantastic. So I want to kind of get us to slow down because listen, I've seen you guys talk into the wee hours in the morning. We're not going to do that tonight. So <laughs> Although, just, wait, hold on. Henry Kim just got here, man. Like, I, I, we got to, like, Henry, yeah, I can't believe the five Henry. minutes that he stays, right? <laughs> yeah, he either comes in the first five minutes or the last five minutes. I, somewhere in there. So, uh, just to, he's Henry Tim is that person that, at uh, you remember from a party, but you don't remember him at the beginning or at the end. You just know he was there at some point, <laughs> you know. Henry Tim was probably uh, at every conference ever had in the channel in 2023, right? I guarantee he's got to take the cake. I, I I thought I'd go to a lot. No, I think he's got me. <laughs> I think right. he has one of those things uh, from Harry Potter that what is the time turner? Um, so he could be in multiple places at once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. All right. You know what that is? It's time for Florida Man or Random Question. Uh-oh. Here we go. Did you guys prepare for uh -oh. that? Uh, I'll be um, honest. Uh, no. <laughs> I hope Nancy did. No. Nancy, did kidding. you? No. Did you prepare for it? Of course I prepared for it. Now, if it's the right thing, I don't know. Well, let, let's see. The first part oh, is, yeah. let, me, let me ask, are you going to... Tell us a story to challenge Florida man, or are you going to wimp out and answer a random question? <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm going to challenge Florida. Man. All right. I think I've oh. got a good one. Okay. I, think I have a good one. <laughs> so tell us your Florida man challenge story. So someone from our community <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good start. Someone source sources say from our community. <laughs> yep, not going to name any names because we don't know who it is. <laughs> but Here if you're comes. listening, you know who you are. So, I live in Houston, and there's a prominent street in Houston. It's called Westheimer. If you've been to Houston, you know Westheimer. Someone packed a sign that is like huge and very visible on this busy street in Houston and decided to tell the world how they felt that day, I guess, and said something very inappropriate. This, do you want to, do you want to know what the sign said? Of course. <laughs> it, it said, go beep yourself. <laughs> Oh, so that made the on the sign on Westheimer. On a sign on Westheimer. Are these texts, man, I swear. What are you several <laughs> several hours before they took it down? <laughs> oh. Now, here's the question: Is there are there pictures to prove it? There are. Nice. There are pictures oh. to prove it. <laughs> there are. You'd have to look it up. <laughs> All right. There we go. And now you're filter might block you because yeah, yeah. it might ah. <laughs> all right so Juan, your part into this uh, florida man challenge is you're going to pick a number between one and three and that'll be the florida man story that i that i share so he thought it's so three. easy <sighs> well he said he didn't prepare so i'm not going to have him scramble oh, uh, on air you, actually, you know what hey just to it's make a random it fun question and, and, Give me a random question. Random question. Okay. Well, I'm not, and I'll pick a number, but after the random question. Okay. So, random question is going to be. Okay. This is. Good one. It's a good one. Make it a good one. Uh, I probably should have backed up. Let's what, just rewind the tape. What conspiracy theories? Here we go. What conspiracy theories do you believe could be true? Mm, that's actually a really good one. Um, 
Man, that's actually really, really good. So I, I, let me just, I'm a, I'm a data guy, right? So okay. like, I've dug into the depths of a lot of conspiracy theories. There are all kinds of them. It's just because I'm trying to understand the thing that drives the people to believe it's true or to actually get to the bottom of it. One of them being contrails. Like I love the, I love the contrail conspiracy. Like I, I think that that's probably one of my favorite things to look at. I mean, every time I'm in a plan, I'm like looking out the window to see if they start spraying aluminum oxide over the cities. Right. Like I think that's probably one of my fun ones. Like uh, there's that. Also the conspiracy theory of, uh, you know, what's underneath the Denver DIA airport is another fun one. Okay. And growing up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, always under thinking about uh, the conspiracy theory about things being in the mountains and like there's these hidden bunkers. I can actually, I worked at Sandy national labs and I can tell you that they're issued in the mountains, but I also uh, growing up there, all the things about aliens, right? Roswell and area 51 and all these things. So I grew up uh, in a very I mean, conspiracy theorist aspect. So I always had to search for all the data to find it. So those are the top three, I think, um, are my biggest conspiracy I believe theories that I actually had a boom, boom, <laughs> boom. Like, I can keep going, actually. Contrails, Area 51, we're ready. <laughs> like Stargate, Stargate, like, Cheyenne Mountain. I mean, just <laughs> yeah, flat wow. earth theory, Ooh. right? Like, you know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, Bigfoot, right? I lived in Durango, Bigfoot Colorado, is real. And yeah. You'd be surprised, like, how many people still believe there's a Bigfoot up there and, yeah. like, how people we go hunt for it and, I'm just like, it's wild, man. Like, sometimes you just have to let the creative mind go, and that's where I find the It's funny. <laughs> so wow. let's pick a number. All right. One, two, or three. I'm going to go with three. I think three is my, uh, one of my favorite numbers. Three. Okay. <laughs> Some of the comments in here are live. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Florida man destroys bus after waking up in Disney World. Instead of Sea World, the Florida uh, man is. I saw that one. <laughs> I saw that one. Yeah. Yep. Oops. He destroyed a bus. Thirty-seven-year-old Elijah Thomas was arrested after a violent attack against a bus that had transported him to the Walt Disney World Resort. In uh, Thomas rode a Lynx bus from downtown Orlando in an attempt to make it to Sea World, but fell asleep and ultimately missed his stop. Uh, so if you've seen the story, let me go on. Uh, let's see. When he got there, the bus driver told him he had to get off the bus as Disney Springs was the final stop. Thomas then became irate, started to yell and curse at the driver. He exited the bus. He then remained outside while more passengers boarded the bus. And when the bus driver would not allow him on, he punched the front door glass several times then kicked the bottom glass of the front door, causing it to break in a spider pattern. The damage was only $500. But uh, he was arrested. Yeah. Damage to public property. You're done. Yep. Especially well, to Disney. I don't know. I kind of I kinda, I like ours a little bit better. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. We're going to have to get a vote. Like, Do you like that the, the MSP or tech community hacked the sign to put an expletive or – I don't know. Oh, it's, I'm on the fence here. Yeah, what we're going to need to do is start to make this a video version or a pictorial version so we can at least have that. Sometimes, you know, there are Florida Man stories. But, yeah, yours, yours probably – I mean, there's a few times Florida Man has lost. I mean, I can admit this might be one of those times. Man, I'll tell you, that's uh... – it's our naughty tech community acting as uh, Texas Man, I guess you'd say, to rival Florida Man. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, I like that. <laughs> it wasn't me, though. So that's a good thing. Yeah. So at least uh, the airplane fart man wasn't in Florida. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> now, this is a story I don't know. Yeah, I'll have, to go, I'll have to go oh. back and, and find that when there was a uh, – an airline the other day that had to turn around because a gentleman uh, was arguing. Let me see if I can find it real quick. 
with other passengers. Um, let's see. <laughs> Farting plane. Let's worse. see. Just coming off of like a 24 hour flight and then a follow up 13 hour flight, like back to back, like over 50 hours worth of flying. Yeah, here it is. This is so- Gassy passenger reportedly causes American Airlines flight delay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was. Oh. So uh, oh. the alleged story was retold by Reddit user, another Reddit user. Uh, who apparently was on the flight. The user described what happened. I was seated near the row where the situation occurred, describing the gassy man as being audibly disgruntled and maybe hung over. Before, <laughs> before he started farting, he said, you thought that was rude. Well, how about this smell? And let it rip. <laughs> Those beer brats from the stadium got him sideways. That's for oh, sure. My God. Uh, oh. Then it just became arguments and stuff. He started yelling at people across the role. If you don't like it, you can fly private. <laughs> That's so <laughs> effing rude. <laughs> so, yeah, they had to turn the uh, plane around and get him off. And they were delayed about 30 minutes. So, Oh, my. <sighs> Where what city was this? Wow. In? Uh, this was, let's see. We got to know the city because there's a lot be of Texas. cities. Please don't be Texas. <laughs> Uh, the flight was from Phoenix to Austin. So close. I was going to Austin. (laughs) (laughs) He's from Texas. Probably trying to get home. Right. There you go. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, so there is your, what? Even that story is Texas man. So I think Texas man just wins the night. (laughs) <laughs> Fine. One night. <laughs> One night. I'll let you have it. Oh, I love this. <laughs> All right. So there we have it, folks. Our newest friends in the show sponsors Super Ops. Juan Fernandez. The official title is just Channel Chief, right? Channel Chief, man. And Nancy, uh, what is it? Head of U.S. Community. Mm-hmm. I like Queen of the Americas better. I agree. Maybe right. we change it. <laughs> All right. I'll look. For, I'll look for that on LinkedIn tomorrow morning. In parentheses, <laughs> per Marvin B. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right, folks. So I should let you know. Not only is Super Ops the drink sponsor. Uh, they are also sponsor of that Florida Man segment uh, that you just heard. And if you are paying attention to the podcast in your podcatcher, any audio show that we have out that is not associated with a series uh, is also being sponsored by Super Ops. So yesterday we had a episode dropped with our super fan, Brittany Hodak. Uh, so be sure to check that out in your podcatcher. If not, head over to itbusinesspodcast.com and uh, grab your latest episodes. Click on that sponsor page and support our sponsors, NetAlly, Super Ops, Computers Done Right, and Instant House Call. We are going to be seeing you guys out and about. I will not be staying up with you past midnight, but we'll hang at the bar, share stories, and talk about how Super Ops is doing great things for our community. Thank you for your time this evening. And uh, Nancy, we've got another thing to talk about later, so stay on after the show. So that's going to do it, folks, for this Wednesday. You can check us out just about every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We stream live on YouTube, LinkedIn, the Facebook, and on the homepage of itbusinesspodcast.com. Um, check us out. We are the show for IT professionals everywhere, whether you're a solo MSP, a boutique MSP, or a mega millionaire MSP. We bring you product stories and tips to help you do your jobs better, smarter, and faster. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Nancy. And thank you all for everyone that hung out with us live here in the chat. We'll see you all soon. And until next time, holla.